what is up you guys and welcome back to day seven of the PCUS Power Challenge. You ladies are absolutely killing it. We are halfway through this 14 day movement, fitness, nutrition, recovery journey. And I'm so excited to see you guys still showing up and still participating as a part of the challenge. You are doing so well. So to get into today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different because you know how much I talk about the importance of recovery and how that plays a massive role in reversing those PCOS symptoms. So I had to put in a recovery day in terms of this fitness challenge because you shouldn't really be working out seven days a week anyways. And so this is going to be more on the style of an active recovery. So you are still getting your muscles moving. You're getting in some stretches, but you are allowing the time for your muscles to recover so we can show up back on Monday strong and ready to go for those workouts. So what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is pretty much the standard recovery routine that I do for myself on a pretty regular basis. This is definitely a video that you can come back to whenever you are wanting to either wind down. This is a great evening routine stretch that you can follow as well or to start your morning off so that your body can feel ready to go, whether it's getting into bed and getting a better night's sleep or starting the day so you can move well and better throughout the day. So obviously you're not really going to need any equipment. You can come here in your sweats, get in those cozy clothes. We're going to be activating a few muscles first, and then it's going to be a lot of stretching and moving around like that. So let's get started here. We're going to start off with some dead bugs. What I always do is I always warm up glutes and core. That is kind of just the foundation of good functional movement patterns as well as we were going to be stretching those muscles. So you want those muscles to be warm prior to stretching. If you're starting off super cold, not ideal. So we're going to come down on to our back, keeping that core nice and tight. Now, the easiest way to start with your dead bugs, I actually like to have my core or having my hands monitor my core because you want to make sure your ribs aren't flaring up and your back is overly arching. You actually want to keep those ribs tucked down. There should be a light gap on the floor for where your back is. And then keeping your ribs and hip bones, holding that with your hands in line. Now, I keep those elbows off the ground, raise those feet up, keeping your core nice and tight and then just extend the leg down, hover above the ground, bring that leg back up, and then keep alternating just like that, keeping that core nice and tight. Nothing too intense here. This is just getting those muscles warm and good to go, especially in the morning time. If you don't have time for a workout, just warm up glutes core and do a quick stretch and you will move better throughout the day. Give it a try and you will be surprised. Good. Keep alternating those legs back and forth. Keep that core nice and tight. Making sure this isn't transferring into your low back. If it is, then switch it up. Give yourself a rest and reset. Good. We're going to go for four, three, two, and one. Rest those feet down. Staying in this position, we're going to go straight in to those glute bridges. Thrusting your hips high up towards the sky, squeezing them as tight as you can, giving yourself a moment to get that extra squeeze in, thrusting them up towards the sky, hover down, and then squeeze right back up. Hover down, don't let them touch the ground, squeeze right back up. Again, just a gentle warm up for those glutes. Good. I know you guys have heard me say it so many times, glutes and core is the foundation of good functional movement patterns. Your core and your trunk is what keeps you stable and your glutes is where those hinging patterns come from and where you should be moving is from your hips. Good, thrust those hips up towards the sky, keep, keep it up. Nice job, we're gonna go for four, three, two, and one. Nice. Now come up to a seated position. Again, it's just a quick warm up. This is not the workout for the week. Bringing those feet close together in towards. I like to hold the feet, even just sit here, let those hips loosen and open up for a little bit. And if it feels comfortable, you can lightly press down on your knees and fold forward. I always hear a few cracks whenever I go into this move which means that we do need to be releasing tension from there, getting as low as you can. At first with this stretch, aim for a flat back so you can get a deeper stretch. But then as you get lower, what I like to do is drop the head down and roll my spine back up. 
Oftentimes your back is tight. So getting it moving and fluid and your stretches always helps. Let those shoulders come forward as you roll up, holding this position down. We're gonna hold this for five, four, three, two, one. Roll that spine back up, chin down. Nice work. Now we are going to start in a plank position. This is called a world's greatest stretch. Bear with me, it gets a little confusing at the start. So I like to start in a plank, roll myself back just a little bit or shift your weight back just to get a bit of an extra stretch in those calves. A lot of times we don't really stretch out our calves much. Then shift the weight back forward, bring one leg up front. Now if this is feeling intense, you can rest that knee down. And now the arm that is closest to that leg, try and get your forearm to the ground and then open up your chest towards that bent leg. You should feel a little bit of a chest stretch here as well as that lower body stretch. Then wave the arms back and forth, all the way down one more time, forearm to the ground, open up that chest. Nice work. Put that arm down, legs up to plank, hold for a quick sec, little core workout. Then other leg up, rest that knee down if you did the same thing on that side. Give yourself a second to get comfortable in that position. Then same arm, forearm to the ground. Open up that chest, little chest stretch. Wave that arm back and forth, get a little bit of shoulder movement in here. Good. Forearm to the ground, open up that chest, wave the arm back and forth, ending with forearm to the ground. Hold there for a second. Good. Now, come back up to that plank, do a quick little pause, downward dog. So shoot those hips up towards the sky, pedal those feet out alternating trying to have that heel touch the ground nice job really extend through those shoulder blades pushing those hands into the ground so you should feel extra pressure on the palms of your hands and then what i want you to do which i don't see a lot of people doing but i learned this from a really good yoga instructor is you actually want to roll your body forward Starting at your hips, rolling your spine into a plank, having your head come up last, and then as you come back to downward dog, curve your bum, hips towards the sky, head looks towards the ceiling, roll yourself to downward dog, head is the last thing to drop. If you want to take a second to look at what I'm doing, I'll give you a demo round because I know this can be a bit confusing, so feel free to pause and take a look here. Rolling your back to plank, hips lead, head up, coming through. Downward dog. Okay, get in that downward dog position. We're gonna do the roll together. It's gonna be a bit of a flow movement. Rolling back to plank, hips to downward dog, head up, drops down to the ground. One more roll, forward, Rolling back, hips towards the sky, head up and down. Nice. Now you're going to walk your hands to the back where your feet are and just dead hang there for a second. I like to cross my hands over and rock back and forth. Nice work. Feel a little bit of stretch in that back. Good stuff. Now walk those hands back to plank. Bringing the foot forward, you're gonna go into a pigeon pose. So knee comes up, foot resting on the ground, and you can come all the way down to rest. Get a little bit of a deeper stretch in those glutes. Good. We're gonna hold there for five, Four, three, two, one. Slowly roll and come out of it. Going back into that plank. 
opposite side for that pigeon pose. Stretching those glutes, leg down. And if you're feeling comfortable, forearms down onto the mat. Our glutes get a lot of work, as you guys have probably felt over the week, um, because all of that lower body movement, even if we're changing up between quads and hamstrings, your glutes are always engaged. So you really wanna take the time to stretch them out, give them that recovery and rest. Good, we're gonna hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Last couple of moves here. First, we're going to come to our hands and knees and we're gonna do a quick cat-cow, stretching out, head up towards the sky, stretching out that back, then all the way, curving that spine in, pulling that belly button in towards your stomach. Holding there for a second, going back, curving your back up, looking up towards the sky. Good, let's go for two more. Curving that back up, pushing those shoulders through, and head towards the sky. Good, last one, back up. Curving into that cat, and head up back towards the sky. Nice work. Almost there. We are now going to go into a cobra position to get a little bit of an extra core stretch. So stretching that back up. If this is too intense, feel free to come down to those forearms and just start here like so. Now if you want a deeper stretch, come up onto those hands, push yourself up. Should feel a stretch in your abdomen and not too much pressure in your back. If you're feeling a bunch of pressure in your back, just take it down a notch. Good. Okay, last move here, pull those hips back. Sitting into child's pose. Now, what I want you to do is you could just passively sit here, which is fine, but I wanna get a deeper stretch in your lat muscles right here. So, I want you to inch those hands forward and place them with your fingers spread wide on the mat and then sit back into your hips and really relax. Now you'll notice here, you should start feeling that deeper stretch in your lat muscles. Those often do not get a lot of love and can cause a lot of shoulder tension. Sitting back here, nice. We're gonna go for five, four, three, two, one. Now walk those hands to your left hand side. Same thing, but deeper lat stretch. So stretch forward and then sit back into it. You've walked over to the left side and you should feel a deeper stretch on your right side. Sit into it, pull against. And we're gonna go for five, four, three, two, one. Walk your hands over to the right hand side. Stretch those fingers forward, sit into it, feel the deeper stretch on your lats on your left. Hold it there for a second. We're gonna go for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good, now slowly walk yourself up. Come to a seated position or just stay in that position that you are because we are done for the stretching and recovery day. You guys are absolutely killing it in the PCOS Power Challenge. I am stoked to have you here. Don't forget to submit the word power over on Instagram so you have your chance to win a completely free call with me where we're gonna be doing a PCOS lifestyle audit and I'm gonna give you more personal feedback on what you can do to reverse those PCOS symptoms. So until next time, I will see you guys on Monday.